Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Breakfast with Bob from Clash Daytona. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Toyota Captiva Spine Foundation Risk Partners USA Triathlon. My next guest, Mr. Rudy Von Berg, joins us. Rudy, we saw you at Collins Cup, and you told us that day when we were doing an interview that, you know what, I, I, I'm not feeling well, and I might not be racing. And what are, it, it, you basically have not r- raced since. What what uh, what do you what, what what did it turn out to be? Yeah yeah I mean last time I raced was what, beginning of August. Yeah. Uh, that was a pretty tough time at Collins Cup. It ended up being Epstein Barr virus. Ah. Uh, the mononucleosis. Brutal. Yeah. Yeah. Took me out for about five weeks. Yes. Zero training. First time I've done that in since I've started triathlon. <laughs> wow. And and you had such good years the the last couple of years with. You know, getting being on the podium at uh, the 70.3 Worlds and everything else you've been up to. Mm-hmm. How hard was it to pull out of the race, the Collins Cup? Because that's, you know, that's a huge showcase. Yeah. And a lot of times you go, oh, well, maybe I'll feel better on race day. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I was counting on. Uh, obviously, Collins Cup was one of the major races of the year. You yes. know, the first Collins Cup for the P- newly uh, started PTO. Uh, so it was a big objective for me. I've been qualified the whole year, uh, so I knew I was going. Uh, I was feeling good going into it, or at least a few but, weeks before. Right. I won my last race uh, in Switzerland, beginning of August. So everything was set for that in 70.3 Worlds. And then, yeah, the day after Switzerland, got completely sick. I was pretty sick for 10 days, lost 10 pounds. Oh my so God. you'd think after that, okay, maybe I wouldn't be so uh, confident for Collins Cup, but I still had some hope. Sure. Uh, I got back into some easy training in the 10 days before the race. And I was like, okay, I, I lost 10 days of training, but I was in really good shape before that and had many months of good volume, good intensity. Yep. So I was like, okay, maybe sometimes it's you know a blessing in disguise. Right. But um, I mean, when I was running the few days before the race, I couldn't run without walking. Oh my God. And yeah, I was just, I mean, I was sick. So <laughs> the, the hard part is you're, you're, you know, giving up that spot that you work so hard to get, but it, it shows a lot of class to be able to do that because you knew that Colin was going to be able to represent better, right? right. Than you were going to be able to represent because of being sick. Right. I mean, I could have just raced being sick and yes. get my cash, but right. I was like, I mean, yeah, I mean, Colin was there already right? and he wanted to race and well, obviously, if I was fit, I would have raced, but right, yeah. I was just not ready. And uh, was it hard also, just with all the TV, yeah. the coverage, yes. I didn't want to just no. make a fool out of myself and just race terribly. Yeah, that made no sense, and for Team USA as well. Right. So, well, that's a yeah. lot of pressure because you're representing your country, right? You want to you you want to do the right thing, and you did the right thing because that's you, you want to give your country the best chance to get points. And you, yeah, the state exactly. you were in, there was no way. Well, were, and I mean, also just racing, being sick like that, I would have made it even worse. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, there was no point. That day, was it hard to watch? Yeah, it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was, I imagine. It, I mean, there's two sides to it. It was nice to be there the week because I was not that sick that I couldn't like right. be around at meals. I was actually not contagious anymore. Right. But I still felt really tired and yeah, in no way I could race. So it was nice to just talk to all the athletes. Right. And it's this, the Collins Cup is one of the only races where everyone's there in the same hotel. Everyone eats at the same restaurant. And you had your own, the U.S. had their own area and the Europeans and Yeah, that was just well for the specific meetings. Right. But all the restaurant and everyone was there, coaches, media, right. athletes. So it was really nice to just talk to everyone and be there. Yes. But at the same time, yeah, every single person asking me, how hey, you doing? how are how you? you? <laughs> every time. I was uh, like, you're like, uh, not good. And yeah, I was so uh, sick of seeing that. I'm not any better than I was two minutes ago. Right. Yeah, so, was, yeah. <laughs> so how long did all this last? Um, from August 9 till September 20. Okay. When I started training again. And, and as you started training again, did it, you, all of a sudden you start feeling, you know, you, you lost weight. You have to, yeah, you're, yeah, you're was really good. starting from ground zero. Yeah, I was really skinny. I mean, I was 10 pounds down and I mean, I was already pretty skinny. And uh, yeah, I mean, the first two or three weeks of running specifically. Yeah. Phew, awful, I was running huh? extremely slow and my heart rate was 150. And were you up at altitude? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I mean, just, just to run was actually difficult at the yeah. beginning. Yeah. And yeah, I had a total of 11 weeks till this race. Okay. But counting the first three weeks 
were really just super slow progression. When did you start feeling, okay, I think I might be able At to... At five weeks, yeah. I started having the first glimpses of... Of you? Of feeling <laughs> decent in training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I still had, I guess, six weeks, mm -hmm. but really only five of training. Right. And it progressed pretty well. But from there to say, oh, I'm in my best shape of my career, <laughs> no. probably not. But I mean, I think I'm in decent yeah. shape. Okay. So yeah, we'll and yeah. now you were, were you podium here last year? Fifth. I was fifth. Fifth, yeah. Which and you is were the same thing in Miami. In, the, in, in the, this race, in absolutely. In the race it was last year. Absolutely. Yeah. That was still good money for fifth place. It was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you, uh, what did you come away with? What did you learn about this race last year? Because it's so different than any other race you do. Right. And you do really well on races like, like Nice and, and courses that are challenging. Right. This is challenging, but in a different way. Right. This is not exactly my, my type of course, no. especially on the bike. Yeah. I mean, I like it technical and hilly. This is just stay aero and <laughs> stay aero the whole time and push, uh, you know, push um, linear power. Right. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I like to think I can, well, also it's a mental thing, you know. I, I like to think I can perform on any course right i don't limit myself to only hilly courses sure and i mean i did prove it last year i went from what 20th out of the swim to first off the bike yes and on a course that doesn't suit me yeah. so i mean that was pretty solid um yeah so we'll see i mean I, I lost a bit of weight so i'm not sure if i quite have the power i have i had last year mm -hmm. at this time i still need a bit more time i think but yeah overall you find it's out where you're at yeah, I mean, I'm comfortable on my new Trek bike and the right. new uh, disc brake bike. And uh, so no problem for staying in the TT position. Good. It's just the actual raw power. We'll see if uh, it's up there or if I'll be more kind of hanging on to the best cyclists rather than pushing the pace. You, usually when people come back, they you know do a couple of small local races or they just sort of get the cobwebs out. You're, you're basically jumping into the deep end here. Where you yeah. Got, yeah, this is <laughs> still a really good field. Uh, on a course that's, you know, because you've got Olympic distance athletes and you've got 70.3 athletes, it's a little shorter, uh, it's you know, that different distance, it's going to be fast. Definitely. I mean, it was super fast last year. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, we'll see. I'll just have to – race day will be kind of a discovery for me. I haven't had five weeks off of training and, yeah, since the beginning of my career. Yes. So I'm kind of a little bit in the unknown, a little more than usual. Yes. Just, yeah, just because of that. Um, and then what will next year be? What are you thinking about? Probably a lot of it depends on how this um, goes. No, not really. Okay. I've, my big objective for next year is doing my first Ironman. Ah. In Ironman France. Okay, perfect. So I hope the new uh, COVID variant won't mess things up again i know I but know. Uh, that, that is the big objective i'll do a few halves beginning of the season keep the speed yeah definitely yeah. i don't want to just do all ironmans right so, so that's moving forward that'll be sort of the mixture mixtures between fulls and halves is the goal obviously to get well right primary main goals will be on the ironman distance yes but then well also there might be these pto championship races right which will be over the half distance yes so those could be like kind of intermittent uh, objectives going into the, the yes. big Ironmans. But yeah, I mean, I'll do Nice. And then if I qualify for Kona, I'll do Kona. But that's it. I'm not going to look to do Will you do St. George full? No. Not the, no, because I'm not George. qualified. I mean, oh. I haven't done a full. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Well, and the goal down the line is to still race with your dad over there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's had a kind of a tough year with two surgeries. Okay. One in his shoulder, one in his knee. But he's coming back. He's back riding, and uh, he hopes to qualify for for Kona as for well Kona next year. And my brother, your brother actually, too. He, he already qualified. Oh. in Ironman France this year, last September, just a few months ago. So, so it's nice. possible it might come all together, and we'll be all three there. So that racing. potentially would be next October. Right, potentially. Wow, good for you. But we still have two out of three people yet to, <laughs> yet to qualify. So, <laughs> but that's it. the goal. Love it. Hey, well, Rudy, feel feel good, man, and ha have a have a great race. Thank you, Bob. Always a pleasure. Rudy Von Berg has been our guest, everybody. Breakfast with Bob, Clash Daytona. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. See ya.